Hi everyone, it's me again, Sharon Ayala, and today I got another pattern for you, and it's for this basic little teddy bear. He's a cute little guy. I think he's fairly easy to make. His head and body are all one piece. He's in a sitting position. His written pattern can be found on my blog, and that is linked in the description box below this video. And there you'll find the supplies list as well. So I think that's about it. Oh, there is a Christmas hat and scarf already available for this guy, and you can find that on my blog as well. So I hope you have fun, and if you do make yourself a little teddy bear, please post pictures on my Facebook page, Emma Grimmie Freely. I'd love to see. Thanks so much for watching, and have fun! Okay, we begin right here at the top of the head, and we work our way down, all the way down to the bottom of the body. If you're planning on using safety eyes and you want to attach those backs as you go along, I put these eyes in between the 10th and the 11th row. And there's about 6 or 7 stitches between them. Okay, we begin with a loop with six stitches. Now there's two ways that you can do this. You can do it with a magic ring, or you can do it by chaining two and putting six stitches into the second chain from the hook. I have two video tutorials here on YouTube that will walk you through each one of those methods. Here is the magic circle, and here is the adjustable loop chain two method. You can choose which method works best for you, and once you have your loop of six stitches, come on back, and we're going to put two single crochets in each one of those six stitches. But before we do that, we're going to add in a marker. So we're just going to pull out our last stitch so we don't lose it. And go right through the stitch itself. And what I use for a stitch marker is just a piece of yarn of a different color. And I'm going to pull it through. I'm just going to lay it over the hook and pull it through. Pull one tail through and leave the other one hanging. And we're going to move this marker at the end of every row. And for the starting yarn tail, you can work it into the second row as we crochet, and you just hold it along the edge and crochet around it. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to leave it hanging, and you can do the same, and then we can just tuck it into the work as we go along. But we can also cut it up a bit shorter to get it out of the way. And you never want to cut a starting yarn tail up to where it's coming out, because it'll eventually work itself free, and you'll have a hole in your stuffy. Okay, row two is two single crochets in each one of those six stitches. Now, I can't show you on this one because it's not showing up so clearly in the, in the video, so I'm going to show you with this color here. When you look at your... this is the same thing, I just did a magic circle with six stitches. Now if you look at the stitch, there is a V. This is stitch one right here. And there's two loops in that V. So when you push your hook through, just make sure you got two loops of that stitch on top of your hook. So there's one, and there's the second one, third, fourth, fifth, and the sixth one is right underneath this loop. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put two single crochets in each one of those six stitches. So when I go through, I'm making sure that I have two loops of that stitch on top of my hook. Yarn over and pull it through. Yarn over and pull through. And there was one single crochet in the first stitch. And now I'm going to go back into the same stitch, or the same hole I was just in, and put another single crochet. So pushing through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through. And there was two single crochets into the first stitch. Now I'm going to go into the second stitch, pushing through, making sure there's two loops on top of my hook, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through. Going back into the same stitch or the same hole I was just in and put another single crochet. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And there was two single crochets into the second stitch. Now I'm going to go into the third one and do the same thing. Single crochet, going back in the same stitch or the same hole I was just in, and another single crochet. And that was two single crochets into the third stitch. Now I'm going into the fourth one, and same thing, pushing through, making sure I have two loops on top of my hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through. Going back in the same stitch,
and that was two single crochets into the fourth and now I'm going into the fifth stitch pushing through yarn over pull through back in the same stitch for the second crochet and that was two single crochets into the fifth stitch and now I'm going into the sixth stitch and you can see there's my marker so I'm just going to pull my marker out and put my two single crochets into that stitch and we're finished round two and now we have 12 stitches around we're going to move our marker so you just go through this last stitch you just put in and move the marker okay we're ready for round three round three is one single crochet into the first stitch two single crochets into the second stitch and then repeat that sequence all the way around till we land on the marker when we land on the marker we should be putting in two single crochets so one single crochet two single crochets one single crochet two single crochets repeating all the way around till you land on the marker one single crochet into the first stitch and now two single crochets into the second going back in the same stitch we were just in to put our second crochet and now we're going to repeat that sequence one single crochet then two single crochets Now we're putting two single crochets into this next stitch. There was one and two. And now we repeat that sequence. One single crochet and two single crochets. One. And into the next stitch, put two. Now repeating that sequence. One single crochet and two single crochets into the next stitch. So one, now going into the next one and putting two. And now repeating one single crochet in the next and two single crochets into the stitch after that. And last time one single crochet and two single crochets and you can see the two single crochets is landing on the marker so one single crochet and now we're going to pull out the marker and put in two and that was the end of row three and now we have 18 stitches around pull out your last stitch so you don't lose it pushing through and move the marker Now we're ready for round four. One single crochet in the first, one single crochet in the second stitch, and then two single crochets into the third stitch. Repeat that sequence all the way around till you land on the marker. When you land on the marker, you'll be putting in two single crochets. So I'll do the first few sets with you. One single crochet in the first, one single crochet into the second stitch, and now two single crochets into the third stitch. Remember that stitch is that V and we're pushing through making sure there's two loops on top of your hook. And put our two single crochets. And now repeat that sequence. One single crochet in the first, one single crochet into the second, and then two single crochets into the third stitch. One in the first, one in the second, and two single crochets into the third stitch. Now I'll leave you to finish this row. One in the first, one in the second, two into the third, and repeating one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, and remember two is going to land on that marker. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here when we finish off this row. Okay, we're finished round four. Now we have 24 stitches around, and we can stop and do a stitch count. I just pulled up my last stitch so I don't lose it. And the first stitch I'm going to count is right underneath this big loop. 
it's the one I put my stitch marker into. And you can see the V there. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, and twenty four. And that twenty fourth one is right in front of this knot here. Where this big loop is. There's the V right there. And it's right in front of this one. So your first stitch to count is underneath this big loop, right there. And the last one is in front of the big loop, right there. Okay, we're ready to carry on to row five, but before we do that, if you notice that your piece is starting to fold up this way, it'll naturally fold that way, and that is actually turning itself inside out. So to work right side, you want to push where the starting yarn tail is coming out of, inward. So this is the right side, and where the starting yarn tail is coming out of, you can see the difference there. Wrong side and right side. So we'll move the marker. So row five is one single crochet in the next three stitches, then two single crochets into the fourth stitch. Repeat that sequence all the way around till you land on the marker. When you land on the marker, you'll be putting in two single crochets. One single crochet in the first, one single crochet in the second stitch, one single crochet into the third, and two single crochets into the fourth stitch. Now you're just going to keep repeating that sequence all the way around till you land on the marker. One single crochet in the next three stitches, and two single crochets into the fourth stitch. So I'll let you carry on and I'll meet you back here when you land on the marker. Remember when you land on the marker you should be putting in two single crochets. I'll finish row five and now we have 30 stitches around. I've moved my marker. Row six is one single crochet in the next four stitches, then two single crochets into the fifth stitch. Repeat that all the way around till you land on the marker. When you land on the marker you should be putting in two single crochets. So one single crochet in the first, one single crochet into the second stitch, one into the third, one single crochet into the fourth, and now two single crochets into the fifth stitch. One and two. And now we're going to repeat that sequence. One single crochet in the next four stitches. That was two, three, four, and two single crochets into the fifth. Now keep repeating that sequence and I'll meet you back here on the marker. Remember when you land on the marker you should be putting in two single crochets. I'll finish row 6 and now we have 36 stitches around. I've moved my marker. Row 7 through 14 is one single crochet in each one of those 36 stitches for 8 rows. So I'm going to continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of row 14. Just remember to move your marker at the end of every row. And to make it easier on yourself, keep a little notepad beside you. And every time you move that marker, put a little notch on your notepad. And when you have 8 notches, you know you're done and we'll meet back here. So one single crochet in each one of those 36 stitches for 8 rows. Don't forget to move your marker. Okay, I'm all finished row 14 and I've already moved my marker. I'm just going to show you how to count the rows in case you've lost track along the way. So we count the rows just simply by counting the rings. All these rings here. And we start with the loop that we began with right here and that's ring 1 or row 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So we know we're finished row 14. Now if you count in front of the marker, it's going to be a row less. It's just because of the way it dips down here, so you don't want to count in the front of the marker. You always want to count behind the marker, and that'll give you a more accurate row count. Okay, we can continue on to row 15. 
where we're going to start decreasing the hole now and we're going to put one single crochet in the next four stitches and then we're going to crochet two stitches together repeat all the way around till you land on the marker when you land on the marker you should be crocheting two stitches together so we're just going to work this row together go ahead and put one single crochet in the next four stitches that was one two three and four and now we're going to crochet the next two stitches together just go in grab your yarn pull it through leave that loop on your hook and go into the next stitch and grab your yarn and pull it through now you have three loops now you yarn over and pull through all three loops and you just crochet two stitches together now we're going to repeat that sequence one single crochet in the next four stitches that's two three and four and now we're going to crochet the next two stitches together so go in and grab your yarn and pull it through leave that loop on your hook and go into the next stitch grab your yarn and pull it through now you have three loops yarn over and pull through all three loops and now you're just going to keep repeating that sequence so you land on the marker when you land on the marker you'll be crocheting two stitches together so what I'll do is I'll continue on with the pattern I'll meet you back here just when we're ready to finish off the last set and we'll do that together so you know what it looks like when you land on the marker so one single crochet in the next four stitches then two single crochets together and I'll meet you back here just when we're ready to finish off the last set okay I've made it almost all the way around and I'm ready to finish off the last set of the sequence one single crochet in the next four stitches that was one two three and four and now we're going to crochet the next two stitches together and you can see the last stitch is going to land on that marker so we're going to pull the marker out go in and grab our yarn pull it through leave that loop on our hook and go into the next stitch grab our yarn and pull it through now you have three loops yarn over and pull through all three loops and that completes row 15 and now we're down to 30 stitches around move the marker and then we're going to keep decreasing row 16 is one single crochet in the next three stitches and then crochet two stitches together repeat all the way around till you land on the marker when you land on the marker you'll be crocheting two stitches together so we'll do that together here one single crochet in the first one single crochet in the second stitch one single crochet into the third and now crochet two stitches together those two there go ahead and grab your yarn pull it through leave it on your hook go into the next stitch grab your yarn and pull it through you now have three loops yarn over and pull through all three loops now repeat that sequence and keep repeating till you land on the marker when you land on the marker you'll be crocheting two stitches together one in the next three and two stitches together I'll continue on with the pattern I'll meet you back here when you land on the marker okay I'll finish row 16 and now we have 24 stitches around row 17 is one single crochet in the next two stitches then crochet two together repeat all the way around till you land on the marker when you land on the marker you'll be crocheting two stitches together so one in the first stitch one single crochet into the second stitch and now crochet two stitches together and now repeat that sequence and keep repeating until you land on the marker remember when you land on the marker you should be crocheting two stitches together I'll finish row 17 and now we have 18 stitches around row 18 is going to be one single crochet in the next four stitches and then crochet two together repeat all the way around till you land on the marker when you land on the marker you should be crocheting two stitches together so one single crochet in the next four stitches and four and now crochet two stitches together now repeat that sequence and keep repeating till you land on the marker when you land on the marker you should be crocheting two stitches together I'll finish row 18 and now we have 15 stitches around row 19 is one single crochet in each one of those 15 stitches for one row 
So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here when we land on the marker. One single crochet in each one of those 15 stitches. I'll finish row 19. Row 20 is one single crochet in the next four stitches, then two single crochets into the fifth stitch. Repeat all the way around till you land on the marker. When you land on the marker, you should be putting in two single crochets. So one single crochet in the next four stitches. That was two, three, and four. And now two single crochets into the next stitch. Now keep repeating that sequence and I'll meet you back here on the marker. I'll finish row 20 and now we have 18 stitches around. We're going to stop and stuff the head now. So just pull out your last stitch so you don't lose it. Just pull it out and leave it hanging. It's just going to be a big loop. And leave it hanging. And then take your stuffing and just start putting it in. You're going to be putting lots of stuffing in. Then I'm going to show you how to shape the head. Okay, so I just put the majority in there. Now I want to elongate the head a little bit this way, side to side. So when I'm putting the stuffing in, I'm going to start pushing the stuffing to the sides and keep doing that all the way around. And that'll just give the head some shape uh, while you're stuffing it. So I'm pushing it in towards the sides. So put some more in. You can see I'm putting lots in. Pushing it into the sides. I'm spinning the head around too. So that's a big difference there. And you also want to make sure that you're getting stuffing in this area here. But that's the majority for now. We can put more stuffing in over the next few rows as we continue on. Now we can add our marker. Now for the next couple of rows, it's going to be a little bit more awkward to hold on to this head as you crochet around. And give yourself a break because it takes practice to uh, get used to making amigurumi and all the shapes and all that kind of stuff and then holding it while you're trying to crochet. This all takes practice. And each amigurumi you make, you'll get better and better at it. Or I should say easier and easier, not better. It'll just get easier and things will look better. Okay, ready for row 21. We're going to put one single crochet in the next two stitches and then two single crochets into the third stitch and repeat all the way around till you land on the marker. When you land on the marker, you'll be putting in two single crochets. So one single crochet in the first, one single crochet into the second, and then two single crochets into the third stitch. And then repeat that sequence and keep repeating until you land on the marker. And remember, when you land on the marker, you'll be putting in two single crochets. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. I'll finish row 21 and now we have 24 stitches around. Row 22 is one single crochet in the next three stitches, then two single crochets into the fourth stitch and repeat all the way around till you land on the marker. When you land on the marker, you'll be putting in two single crochets. So one single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and three, and two single crochets into the fourth stitch. Now repeat that sequence and keep repeating until you land on the marker. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. I'll finish row 22 and now we have 30 stitches around. Rows 23 to 25 is one single crochet in each one of those 30 stitches for three rows. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of row 25. Just remember to move your marker at the end of every row. One single crochet in each one of those 30 stitches for three rows. I'll finish row 25. Row 26 is one single crochet in the next four stitches, then two single crochets into the fifth stitch. Repeat all the way around till you land on the marker. When you land on the marker, you should be putting in two single crochets. So one single crochet in the first, one single crochet in the second, one in the third, one single crochet in the fourth, and now two single crochets into the fifth stitch. Now you're going to repeat that sequence and keep repeating until you land on the marker. And remember when you land on the marker, you'll be putting in two single crochets. So I'll continue with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. I'll finish row 26 and now we have 36 stitches around. Row 27 is one single crochet in the next five stitches. 
then two single crochets into the sixth stitch and repeat all the way around till you land on the marker. When you land on the marker you'll be putting in two single crochets. One single crochet in the next five stitches. That was two, three, four, and five. And now two single crochets into the sixth stitch. Now repeat that sequence and keep repeating until you land on the marker. I'll finish row 27 and now we have 42 stitches around. Row 28 is one single crochet in each one of those 42 stitches for one row. So I'll continue on with the pattern and I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. One single crochet in each one of those 42 stitches. I'll finish row 28 and now we're going to start decreasing the hole again. Row 29 is one single crochet in the next five stitches. And then we're going to crochet two stitches together. Repeat all the way around till you land on the marker. And when you land on the marker you should be crocheting two stitches together. So one in the next five. That was one, two, three, four, and five. And now crochet two stitches together. Go in and grab your yarn, pull it through. Leave that loop on your hook and go into the next stitch. Grab your yarn, pull it through. Now you have three loops. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. And now you're going to repeat that sequence, one in the next five and then two together, all the way around and we'll meet back here on the marker. I'll finish row 29 and now we have 36 stitches around. Row 30 is one single crochet in the next four stitches and then crochet two together. Repeat all the way around till you land on the marker. When you land on the marker you'll be crocheting two stitches together. So one single crochet in the next four stitches. That was one, two, three, and four. And now crochet two stitches together. And then repeat that sequence and keep repeating and we'll meet back here on the marker. I'll finish row 30 and there we have 30 stitches around. Row 31 is one single crochet in the next three stitches and then crochet two together. Repeat all the way around till you land on the marker. When you land on the marker you should be crocheting two stitches together. So one in the next three. Just make sure what, when you're going around, and I should, probably should have said this earlier, that you're getting into the first stitch and not into the last one you just put in. You just stretch over a little bit. So this is the last stitch we just put in. You can see that our yarn is still sitting inside there. We want to get over here. One single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and three, and then two stitches together. And repeat that and keep repeating and we'll meet back here on the marker. I'll finish row 31 and now we have 24 stitches around. Row 32 is one single crochet in the next two stitches and then crochet two together. Repeat all the way around till you land on the marker. When you land on the marker you should be crocheting two stitches together. So again make sure you're getting into the first stitch of the row and not the last stitch you just put in. One single crochet in the next two stitches and two st stitches together. And now keep repeating that sequence and we'll meet back here on the marker. I'll finish row 32 and now we have 18 stitches around. We're going to stop and stuff the body now. So just pull out your marker. Pull out your last stitch so you don't lose it. And just leave it hanging there in a big loop. And now put your stuffing in. And when you push it in take this time to make sure that all the stuffing is in this area that you need all around in here and that there's no gap in the middle of the neck because sometimes that happens. So I'm just going to use my thumb. I'm pushing it around in this area here and making sure there's no gaps in the stuffing in the head or the neck area. Okay so I just made sure that the neck and all this area here is all filled up. Now I'm going to do the body and the same thing goes for the body as we did for the head. As I'm pushing the stuffing in there I'm going to push to the sides but I'm going to push to the sides the same direction that the head is going. Like if your head is elongated more in this this way then you want the body to be the same. So I'm pushing it to the sides And don't worry about filling it completely right up because we can add more stuffing as we go along and we will be doing that and over the next couple of rows. Now we can add our marker. 
Row 33 is one single crochet in the next stitch and then crochet two together. Repeat all the way around till you land on the marker. When you land on the marker you should be crocheting two stitches together. And as the hole gets smaller and smaller you'll see that it would be really easy to go back into the same stitch that you just put in. And you don't want to do that. So just take a look at the top and the bottom and make sure that you're getting into the first stitch of the next row. One single crochet in the first and then crochet two stitches together. And try to hold the stuffing down as you go around and you don't want to pull the stuffing through the stitches. You can squeeze the body together and make it easier for you to get into those stitches. So I'll squeeze it with those fingers there, holding the stuffing out of the way and then I can continue on. One single crochet in the first and then two together. Pulling my stitches on the tight side. You can see I'm squishing the body. One in the first and then two together. And remember, if this is your first time making amigurumi. It's going to be a little awkward and it takes um, practice to get good at this part. One in the first and two together. You can see my last two stitches there are going to land on that marker. There we go. Move the marker. And that finished row 33 and now we have 12 stitches around. Row 34 is one single crochet in the first and then two together. It's the same as the last row. One in the first and then two stitches together repeating all the way around till you land on the marker. And again squish the body together pushing the stuffing down with your finger out of the way so you don't pull it through your stitches. And that finished row 34. Now we have 8 stitches around. Now we're going to stop, pull out that last stitch and start putting the rest of the stuffing in there. And if you can't get it in with your finger, use the back end of a pencil. It works great for getting stuffing in these smaller holes. Make sure that you get stuffing all in this area here. Just push it in and then up and around with your finger. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now we're going to close up the body. Row 35 is two together twice. Now if you find this too difficult to do, don't worry about it. Just finish off and I'll show you how to close up the gap. But here I'm going to put the two stitches together twice. There was once and twice. Now I'm going to finish off. Leave a tail for sewing. Pull that yarn tail through that loop and pull it tight. I'm going to show you how to close up that remaining gap. We're going to thread our yarn needle. And instead of pushing the end through your yarn needle and fraying the end of your yarn, bend the yarn over and push the bend through. And now we're going to weave in and out of these remaining stitches. Just go in and then out through the other stitch right next door. Make sure that you have two loops of that stitch on top of your yarn needle every time you go through. So in and out. And now we're going to pull in this yarn tail to close up this gap, but before we do that we're going to make sure that the, the uh, piece doesn't need any more stuffing. And if it does, put it in there now. I think mine looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and close this up. I'm just going to pull tight until that gap closes. And now I'm just going to pick a stitch right close by to where I'm coming out of there. And I'm going to knot off. I'm going to go through that loop and pull it tight. I'm going to bring the yarn tail and bury it into the body. You don't want to cut free. because If you cut free, it'll eventually work itself free and you'll get a hole in your stuffy. So we need to bury the yarn tail into the body. So just bring it through and somewhere through a stitch hole out on the side of the body. Now you can pull on it slightly. Pull on it and snip. 
and that buried the yarn tail inside. Okay, now we're going to make the ears, and the ears don't get stuffed, they just get folded flat. And we start right here at the loop with six stitches, and we work our way down. Row one is a loop with six stitches. I just added in a marker into the last stitch I just put in. Row two, we can work the starting yarn tail into the second row, just by holding along the edge and crocheting around it. Or you can just leave it hanging and we'll tuck it into the piece as we work along. Row 2 is 2 single crochets in each one of those 6 stitches. When you land on the marker you'll be putting in 2 single crochets. So I'll go ahead and I'll put 2 single crochets into the first stitch. There was one. And going back into the same stitch I was just in. And put the second single crochet. And there was two single crochets into the first stitch. And I'm just going to repeat that five more times. And remember, when you land on the marker, you'll be putting in two single crochets. So I'll continue on the pattern. I'll meet you back here when we land on the marker. Finished row two, and now we have 12 stitches around. I've moved my marker, put it into the last stitch I just put in. Row three is one single crochet in the first stitch then two single crochets into the second and then repeat that sequence all the way around till you land on the marker. When, the, when you land on the marker you'll be putting in two single crochets. One single crochet in the first and then two single crochets into the second stitch. And now repeating that sequence, one single crochet in the first and two single crochets into the second stitch. Now continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here when you land on the marker. Remember when you land on the marker you'll be putting in two single crochets. At the end of row three, and now we have 18 stitches around, row four is one single crochet in the next five stitches, then two single crochets into the sixth stitch. And repeat that sequence all the way around till you land on the marker. When you land on the marker you'll be putting in two single crochets. So I'll do the first set with you. One single crochet in the first, one single crochet into the second stitch, one single crochet into the third, one single crochet into the fourth, one into the fifth, and two single crochets into the sixth stitch. Now repeat that sequence two more times and I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. Remember when you land on the marker you should be putting in two single crochets. At the end of row four and now I have 21 stitches around and you can see the piece is naturally folding up on itself so I just want to turn it right side so the part where the starting yarn tail is coming out I'm going to push that inwards. Move my marker. Carrying on to row five, one single crochet in the next five stitches, and then crochet two stitches together. Repeat that sequence all the way around till you land on the marker. When you land on the marker, you'll be crocheting two stitches together. So one single crochet in the first, one single crochet in the second, one in the third, one in the fourth, one single crochet in the fifth stitch, and now we're going to crochet two stitches together. And then you're going to repeat that sequence all the way around, and I'll meet you back here when we land on the marker. I'm at the end of row 5, and now we have 18 stitches around. Row 6 is one single crochet in the next 4 stitches, then crochet 2 together. Repeat all the way around till you land on the marker. When you land on the marker, you'll be crocheting 2 stitches together. So one single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in the second, one single crochet in the third, one single crochet into the fourth, and now crochet two stitches together. And now repeat that sequence, and I'll meet you back here when you land on the marker. 
at the end of row six and now we have 15 stitches around I've moved my marker row seven is one single crochet each one of those 15 stitches for one row so I'll continue with the pattern I'll meet you back here when we land on the marker okay all done row seven and now we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch and finish off so just go into your next stitch like you normally would and grab your yarn and pull it through instead of yarning over just pull the first loop through the second loop. Now we're going to finish off. Leave a nice long tail for sewing. I'm going to use this tail to sew the ear to the head. Pull the yarn tail through that loop and pull it tight. Okay now we're going to make the muzzle and for the nose part I use black embroidery thread and a yarn needle. If you don't have embroidery thread you can use yarn. Yarn will work just as well. Row one is a loop with six stitches. I just added in a marker into the last stitch I just put in. Row two, we can work the starting yarn tail into the second row just by holding along the edge and crocheting around it. Or you can just leave it hanging and we'll tuck it into the piece as we work along. Row two is two single crochets in each one of those six stitches. When you land on the marker, you'll be putting in two single crochets. I'll go ahead and I'll put two single crochets into the first stitch. There was one, and going back into the same stitch I was just in, and put the second single crochet. And there was two single crochets into the first stitch. And I'm just going to repeat that five more times. And remember, when you land on the marker, you'll be putting in two single crochets. So I'll continue on the pattern. I'll meet you back here when we land on the marker. Okay, at the end of row two, now we have 12 stitches around. Row three is one single crochet in each one of those 12 stitches for one row. So I'll continue with the pattern. I'll meet you back here when we land on the marker. One single crochet in each one of those 12 stitches. Okay, I just came to the end of row three and you can see the piece has folded up on itself. So I'm just going to fold it right side. The part where that starting yarn tail is coming out, I'm going to push that inward. We're going to slip stitch into the next stitch and finish off. So just go into the next stitch like you normally would and grab your yarn, pull it through. Instead of yarning over, just pull the first loop through the second loop. Now you can finish off. Leave a nice long tail for sewing. You're going to use this tail to sew the muzzle to the face. Pull the yarn tail through that big loop and pull it tight. Now this beginning yarn tail, this starting yarn tail, we just want to cut that up a bit shorter. Okay, now we can add in the nose to the muzzle and all I do is just a series of whip stitching and we do that before we sew the muzzle to the face and where the starting yarn tail is, I like to make that the bottom of the muzzle. So we'll be sewing this way. So you want to make sure that the starting yarn tail is coming out the bottom. And I'm just using black embroidery thread. Yarn will work, but I prefer embroidery thread itself and you just thread it through your yarn needle. So I'm just going to go right through the middle of this loop that we started off with. Right through. Pull the embroidery thread through. And now I'm just going to bend this down and I'm just going to wrap around this post until the nose is the size that I want. And make a little shape And I'll just make a V here, and then I'll fill in the V. Just like that. So I'm just going to wrap around and fill all this area in here. Okay, so now I'm just going to bend this over, and now I'm just going to start wrapping. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. 
So you can add in a mouth if you'd like. I just do a straight line. So again, that's just a couple of wraps around. So I'm going to go in right through there. And then go back in just underneath the nose. And I'm going to do this twice. And that's all there is to that. And I'm just going to knot these two off in the back here. Okay, and just cut the thread tails up. And you can just leave the remainder hanging inside like that. And we don't stuff the muscle. Okay, now we're going to make the arms. And we start right here at the bottom of the hand. And we work our way up to the top of the arm. Row 1 is a loop with 6 stitches. I just added in a marker into the last stitch I just put in. Row 2, we can work the starting yarn tail into the second row just by holding along the edge and crocheting around it. Or you can just leave it hanging and we'll tuck it into the piece as we work along. Row 2 is 2 single crochets in each one of those 6 stitches. When you land on the marker, you'll be putting in 2 single crochets. I'll go ahead and I'll put two single crochets into the first stitch. There was one. And going back into the same stitch I was just in. And put the second single crochet. And there was two single crochets into the first stitch. And I'm just going to repeat that five more times. And remember when you land on the marker you'll be putting in two single crochets. So I'll continue on the pattern. I'll meet you back here when we land on the marker. At the end of row 2, and now we have 12 stitches around, I moved my marker and put it into the last stitch I just put in. Row 3 is one single crochet in the next 5 stitches, then two single crochets into the 6th stitch. And repeat that one more time until you land on the marker. When you land on the marker, you'll be putting in two single crochets. So one single crochet in the next 5 stitches. One, two, three, four and five, and two single crochets into the sixth stitch. One, and two. And then repeat that sequence and I'll meet you back here when you land on the marker. At the end of row three, and now we have 14 stitches around and you can see the piece is naturally folding up on itself. So we're just gonna push where the starting yarn tail is coming out of. We're gonna push that inward. and Turn the piece right side. Move our marker. Rows 4 and 5 is one single crochet in each one of those 14 stitches for two rows. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of row 5. Just remember to move your marker at the end of every row. One single crochet in each one of those 14 stitches for two rows. At the end of row 5, and I've moved my marker, I'm just going to cut that starting yarn tail up a bit shorter and just push the remaining piece inside so it's up and out of my way. Row 6, we're going to put one single crochet in the next five stitches, and then we're going to crochet two stitches together, and repeat that sequence one more time, and when you land on the marker, you'll be crocheting two stitches together. So one single crochet in the next five, that was two, three, four, and five, and now crochet two stitches together. And now repeat that one more time, and I'll meet you back here on the marker. At the end of row 6 I've moved my marker and now we're down to 12 stitches around. Row 7 through 9 is one single crochet in each one of those 12 stitches for three rows. So I'll continue with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of row 9. Just remember to move your marker at the end of every row. One single crochet in each one of those 12 stitches for three rows. At the end of row 9 and I've moved my marker. Row 10 is one single crochet in the next four stitches and then crochet two together and repeat that one more time. When you land on the marker, you'll be crocheting two stitches together. So one single crochet in the next four. That was one, two, three, and four. And now crochet two stitches together. Okay, we're almost there, so we might as well just finish off this row together. One in the next four, 
That was two, three, four. And crocheting two stitches together will land on that marker. And that completes row 10, and now we're down to 10 stitches around. So now we're just going to finish off. Leave a tail for sewing. You're going to use the tail to sew the arm to the body. Pull the yarn tail through that loop and pull it tight. Okay, now you can add a thumb and it's completely optional. You don't have to add it if you don't want to. Now the first thing you want to do is realize that the thumbs, you want them to face each other when they go on the body. So just pretend there's a body there and you put the arms on and that you want the thumbs to face each other. So what I do is you can see where uh, we finished off it has a little bit of a high ridge there. So I want that to be on the outside and the lower part's going to be on the inside that gets sewn to the body. Okay, so I've already done that for this one here. So I know that the high ridge is on the end, so the, the arm's going to get sewn up against the body like this. So I want the thumb on this side here. That way they're facing each other. So just fold your hand flat and we're going to count the rings. We're going to go in between the fifth and sixth row. And we start here. This is the loop that we started off with and that's row one. So row one, two, three, four, five, and six. So in between there. And just push through, just like that. Lay the yarn over. Leave a little bit of a tail hanging there that we can use to sew into the arm later. Just lay it over the hook and pull it through. So I'm just going to place my finger over that yarn tail that's hanging down so it doesn't get pulled through. Just hold it in place. Now we're going to chain one, so just yarn over and pull through. Now we're going to put in two double crochets to make the thumb. So when you make a double crochet you need to yarn over before you go in. Okay, so you yarn over and go into the same hole you just went into, that you just inserted the yarn into. Let's go right through, grab your yarn and pull it through. Now you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the first two loops. Yarn over and pull through the remaining two loops. And now we're going to do one more in the same hole that we inserted that yarn into. Yarn over, go in, grab your yarn, pull it through. You have three loops. Yarn over, pull through the first two loops. Yarn over and pull through the remaining two loops. And that's it. So we're just going to finish off, leave a little bit of tail for sewing. Pull the yarn tail through that loop and pull it tight. Okay, so I just threaded my yarn tail with my yarn needle and now I'm going to tack the thumb down to shape it. So make sure that you're going the right direction. So I'm going to fold the thumb this way so it's facing the other one. Okay, so I'm going to bring my yarn needle right down through there and back up through the thumb, through the beginning of the thumb. Pull it through. So now we just need to knot this off to hold it in place. So I'm just going to go through a stitch right beside where I came out of. Pull it through. Hang on to this yarn before you pull it all the way through. So you have a bit of a loop there. Go through the loop and pull it tight. And that knotted that off. Now you can just bring this yarn tail into the arm. And then we'll bring the other yarn tail into the arm. Bring it down and up. Now you can just cut these shorter and tuck the remaining bits inside. And we do stuff the hand, so I got about that much stuffing in there. This rest of it is free of stuffing. There's no stuffing near the top. So I stuff it right up to about the top of the thumb. You just want a little bit of a bulge in the hand area, but not in the arm. Otherwise, it'll flare out from the body too far. So you want the arm nice and flat. Now we're going to make the legs, and you make two of these. And we start right here at the bottom with a loop. And we work our way upwards 
towards the top of the lake. Row one is a loop with six stitches. I just added in a marker into the last stitch I just put in. Row two, we can work the starting yarn tail into the second row just by holding along the edge and crocheting around it. Or you can just leave it hanging and we'll tuck it into the piece as we work along. Row two is two single crochets in each one of those six stitches. When you land on the marker, you'll be putting in two single crochets. I'll go ahead and I'll put two single crochets into the first stitch. There was one, and going back into the same stitch I was just in, and put the second single crochet. And there was two single crochets into the first stitch. And I'm just going to repeat that five more times. And remember, when you land on the marker, you'll be putting in two single crochets. So I'll continue on the pattern. I'll meet you back here when we land on the marker. Finished row two, and now we have 12 stitches around. I've moved my marker, put it into the last stitch I just put in. Row three is one single crochet in the first stitch, then two single crochets into the second, and then repeat that sequence all the way around till you land on the marker. When, the, when you land on the marker, you'll be putting in two single crochets. One single crochet in the first, and then two single crochets into the second stitch. And now repeating that sequence, one single crochet in the first, and two single crochets into the second stitch. Now continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here when you land on the marker. Remember, when you land on the marker, you'll be putting in two single crochets. All finished row three, and now we have 18 stitches around. Row four is one single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet into the second, and then two single crochets into the third stitch. Repeat that sequence all the way around till you land on the marker. When you land on the marker, you'll be putting in two single crochets. So I just noticed here as I was working along, here is a join. Now sometimes this happens in a ball of yarn, you'll come across this join, and it's not a big deal. I'll show you what I do to get rid of it. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to snip away the excess yarn that's sticking up. Not too close to the knot, just going to get rid of some of that fuzz there. Sometimes I've seen on Facebook where people get really angry when they come across this. Now this might make a bit of a difference if you're working in some fancy work, but I, I find with amigurumi it doesn't, it's not that big of a deal. You just work it into your piece and it disappears. So I'll just work right up to that part with you and you'll see what I mean. So one single crochet in the first two stitches, then two single crochets into the third, repeating all the way around till you land on the marker. When we land on the marker, we'll be putting in two single crochets. So I'll just work the first couple sets until we get rid of that knot there. One single crochet in the first, one single crochet in the second, then two single crochets into the third stitch. Now I'm going to repeat that. One in the first, one in the second, then two single crochets into the third. And here comes that knot. And see, I just worked it in and it didn't cause any problems at all. Not a problem. So I'll continue on. And I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. Okay, I'll finish row four. Now we have 24 stitches around. Rows five and six is one single crochet in each one of those 24 stitches for two rows. So I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of row six. Just remember to move your marker at the end of every row. One single crochet at each of those 24 stitches for two rows. I'll finish row six. Row seven is one single crochet in the next two stitches. Then crochet two stitches together. Repeat all the way around till you land on the marker. When you land on the marker, you'll be crocheting two stitches together. So I'll do the first set with you. One single crochet in the first. One single crochet into the second stitch. And now we're going to crochet the next two stitches together. So go in and grab your yarn, pull it through, leave those loops on your hook and go into the next stitch, grab your yarn, pull it through. Now you have three loops, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Now you're just going to keep repeating that sequence all the way around till you land on the marker. 
So I'll continue with, on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of the row. All finished row 7 and now we have 18 stitches around. And we're going to continue on. We're making this part right here. And you can see there's a little bit of gapping that happens in between the stitches. Don't worry about that. It's not that big of a deal. And it just happens because we're going to be crocheting two stitches together a few times in a row. And it does cause some gaps. But just pull your stitches as tight as you can as you work over the next few stitches. So row 8, we're going to crochet two stitches together four times in a row. And then put a single crochet in the remaining 10 stitches. So I'm just going to work this row with you. So we're going to crochet the first two together. Now just pull your stitches as tight as you can. And we're going to crochet the next two together. And that was twice. We're going to do it two more times. Crochet the next two together. And last time, crochet the next two together. Make sure you're getting in the right stitch. This one we've already worked in. We need to get into those two. And that was four times. Now put a single crochet in the remaining ten stitches. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. And we're finished row eight, and now we have fourteen stitches around. With the marker. Row nine, we're going to crochet the next two stitches together two times in a row, and then put a single crochet in the remaining ten stitches. So I'm just going to fold the piece up. A little bit to make it easier to get into the next few stitches. And I'm going to crochet the next two together. Taking my time and pulling the stitches nice and tight. Flatten it out again. And crochet the next two together. Pulling tight. And I'll put a single crochet in the next 10 stitches. And you can see I folded it flat. It just helps me get around this leg area a little bit easier. And that was three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, and ten. Move the marker. And that was the end of row nine, and now we have twelve stitches around. Rows ten to twelve is one single crochet in each one of those twelve stitches for three rows. So I'm going to continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here at the end of row twelve. Just remember to move your marker at the end of every row. And do take your time over this next row. It just takes a little bit more patience to get into those first few stitches here. So just flatten out your piece so you can work in there easily. Okay, I'll continue on. I'll meet you back here at the end of row 12. Okay, I just finished row 12 and I'm just going to pull up my last stitch so I don't lose it and leave it hanging. And now we're going to stuff the foot. So I'm just going to get stuffing into this area here and I'm not stuffing the leg. The leg is going to be left unstuffed and you do want to shape the foot as you go along. So let's push the stuffing in there. And I'm using my finger to get it right into the toe area. Okay, now I'm going to get it into the heel area back here. 
and I'm shaping the foot as I go along. That's the one great thing about acrylic yarn, you can shape it as you go. And you want to get two matching feet, of course. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now you can see I have a little bit of a gap there. And you can see a little bit of the stuffing through. I'm not so worried about mine. It's not that noticeable. If you've crocheted on the loose side and you have big gaps there, what you can do is take the same colored yarn, just take a bunch of it, and uh, roll it up and put it in there first before you put the stuffing in. So the stuffing will push that yarn up towards the top here and then you won't see any of the stuffing through that. I've done that before on other projects and it works really well. So just give that a try if the gaps are giving you a little bit of trouble and they're too noticeable. Just put the same colored yarn in there first and then you're stuffing. Okay we can continue on here. Now we're going to close up the top of the leg and all we do for that is just push right through, squeeze the top of the leg together and we're going to push our hook right through both sides and we're going through the top edge. Pull your yarn through and put a single crochet. And do the same thing for the next stitch. Go through that stitch and then go through the stitch on the back side. Pull your yarn through and put a single crochet. And the same thing for the next stitches. Go right through. Single crochet. And we're going to do that right across the whole top. Okay, and now we can cut free. Leave a little bit of a tail for sewing. You're going to use this yarn tail to sew the leg to the body. Now you just pull the yarn tail through that loop and pull it tight. Okay, now that we're done the leg, I have to show you how to, how to make the toes. Now for the regular bears, I left the toes off of them because I think they look great without them. If you follow my blog, you would have seen the Remembrance Day bears, and that's these two little guys here and each of them has toes. Now I did tell somebody there, asked me a question on how to make these toes and I said I would show it in the video. So even though these bears aren't meant to have the toes, I'm going to show you how to add them just in case you do want to put them in. So I'm going to insert the toes right on the fifth row from the sloop that we started off with. And we just count the rings. One, two, three, four, five. And how many toes you put in is up to you. On the little bears, I only put four, but I think five would probably be better. So of course you use the same color yarn, but I'm going to show you a different color here just so you can see what I'm doing. So I went right through the fifth row there. Just going to lay the yarn over my hook and I'm going to pull it through. Same way I did the, the thumbs. And I'm going to hold on to this yarn tail down here so it doesn't pull through. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to put in two double crochets. So remember you yarn over before going in. So yarn over and go right through where we just inserted the yarn. Pull the yarn through and now you have three loops. Yarn over and pull through the first two loops. Yarn over and pull through the last two loops. Now we're going to do one more. So yarn over and go through the same hole that we inserted the yarn into. Grab the yarn, pull it through. You have three loops. Yarn over, pull through the first two loops. Yarn over and pull through the last two loops. And that's it. You can make the toes bigger if you'd like and put another double crochet in there. I always, I just thought two was big enough. I'm going to pull that through. Okay, before we shape that, we're going to put our next one in. So we're just going to skip a stitch in between and go over to the next one and do the same thing. Lay the yarn over and pull it through. Chain one. Yarn over and go back through the hole that you just came through. Grab your yarn, pull it through. You have three loops. Yarn over, pull through the first two. Yarn over and pull through the last two. Yarn over, go in. Grab your yarn. Yarn over, pull through the first two. Yarn over and pull through the last two. And that's it. Break free. Leave a little bit of a tail that you can shape and sew the toe down with after. So I'm just going to continue on until I have five toes. Doing the same steps over and over. 
So I'll insert the next one right here. Okay, I just finished tacking down the four toes and I saved the last one to show you. Now each toe is going to have two yarn tails like this. So I'm going to take the top, the yarn tail that's coming up the top of the toe, and I'm going to go right down, right about there, and bring the yarn needle back up right where the toe is starting here. And pull the yarn tail through. Now when you pull it down, just guide it in the right position because sometimes it can get all twisted there. So just make sure it's going straight down. And then you just want to knot this off. Now remember this will be the same color yarn so you won't see it like you're going to see here. Pulled it through too far. So just go through that loop and pull it tight. And then bring the yarn tail down and out through a stitch hole on the foot. And that's all there is to that. Now you just need to get rid of this other yarn tail. Now you just need to pull on them slightly and cut. So that's the toes. Like I said, these bears here look great without the toes. You can feel free to add them if you'd like. Uh, I thought on the camo colored yarn, camouflage yarn, they looked kind of cute. Um, on these bigger bears, I thought they looked just as cute without them. So the choice is that yours and add the toes or leave them off. Okay, now we're going to make the tail. Row one is a loop with six stitches. I just added in a marker into the last stitch I just put in. Row two, we can work the starting yarn tail into the second row just by holding along the edge and crocheting around it. Or you can just leave it hanging and we'll tuck it into the piece as we work along. Row two is two single crochets in each one of those six stitches. When you land on the marker, you'll be putting in two single crochets. I'll go ahead and I'll put two single crochets into the first stitch. There was one, and going back into the same stitch I was just in, and put the second single crochet. And there was two single crochets into the first stitch. Now I'm just going to repeat that five more times, and remember when you land on the marker you'll be putting in two single crochets. So I'll continue on the pattern, I'll meet you back here when we land on the marker. Finished row two and now we have 12 stitches around. I've moved my marker, put it into the last stitch I just put in. Row three is one single crochet in the first stitch, then two single crochets into the second, and then repeat that sequence all the way around till you land on the marker. When, the, when you land on the marker, you'll be putting in two single crochets. One single crochet in the first, and then two single crochets into the second stitch. And now repeating that sequence, one single crochet in the first, and two single crochets into the second stitch. Now I'll continue on with the pattern. I'll meet you back here when you land on the marker. Remember, when you land on the marker, you'll be putting in two single crochets. I'll finish row three, and now we have 18 stitches around, and you can see it's folding up a little bit, so we're just gonna make sure that we're working on the right side by pushing where the starting yarn tail is coming out of inward. Row four is one single crochet in the first and then crochet two together and repeat that sequence all the way around till you land on the marker. When you land on the marker you'll be crocheting two stitches together. So one single crochet in the first and then crochet two stitches together. Now repeat that sequence and keep repeating until you land on the marker. I'll finish round four and now we have 12 stitches around. Now we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch and finish off. So just go in, grab your yarn, pull it through, and instead of yarning over, just pull the first loop through the second loop. So now we're going to break free, leave a nice long tail for sewing. You're going to use this tail to sew the tail itself to the body. Pull the yarn tail through that big loop, pull it tight. And we will be stuffing the tail, but we'll save that part for when we're ready to sew this piece to the body. 
Okay, let's start sewing the bear together. You're gonna to need some pins and a yarn needle. The blunt end yarn needle works best. Okay, first of all, we're gonna sew the legs to the bear. And I'll just bring this little guy in here to show you. They're sewn right directly to the bottom of the body. And so that the bear is always in a sitting position. You can sew them differently, but this is how I planned out the design for this bear, was for it to be in a sitting position. So what I did was I just placed them on and put some pins in there. And I just wanted to check out and make sure that the bear will sit like that and that the legs are even and that they look good in the position they're in. Okay, I've already got the one leg sewn on. And again, you want to make sure that the other leg is exactly where you want it and that the bear sits nice when you put it down. Okay, so now all we're going to do is whip stitch this edge to the body. So just go into the body and then come back up right beside that first stitch. Now again, going down and back up. Okay, so now if I took these pins out, we've now whip stitched that one edge down, the leg will flop down. So we don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a stitch on each end, just down a ways from that edge to hold the leg to the body. Go down, I'm going to come up right to the side of the leg, and then back down to the body right close to the edge of the leg so you don't see the stitches on the outside. I'm going to come up right through the middle of the leg there. Back down. And come up right beside the leg again. And then grab this edge and go down and out through the body. And that just tack the leg up to the body. Now when you're sitting and if there's any bulky parts in here, then just stitch them down to the body. So I'm just going to come up right here. I'm going to grab this little bulky part here. Go back down into the body. There we go. And then there's a bulky part here, so I want to stitch that down. I'm going to go over there and fix that. So that looks a little bit neater. Okay, so now I'm done. I'm going to bring this yarn tail out where the other one is hanging. This is the yarn tail from the first leg, and I'm going to knot these two off. I'm just going to cut them up shorter, and then push that knot into the body. Okay, now we're putting the arms on. I just put the one on and I brought the yarn tail out here and it's going to hang there and wait for the other one. Okay, so the arms get sewn directly underneath the head, just like so. So you just want to make sure that they're both positioned in the same way. So you're just going to hold it on with your thumb and then just get your first stitches in. I'm going to go in and I'm going to come out somewhere else on the body through a stitch hole. I'm going to go back in the same hole I just came out of, go up through the body, and then come up on the edge of that arm. And if you go back in and you notice anything here is being pulled down, just reach in with your yarn needle and pull it back up. Okay, now you got to stitch through there. Now you're going to go back into the neck and out through the back of the body. Go back in the same hole you just came out of and up through the body and through the top of the arm. Back down. 
back into the neck and out through the body. Okay, so the top of the arm is sewn in and now you'll notice that this arm is hanging down nicely and this one is flaring out and all I did to keep it from flaring out was put a couple of stitches on either side of the arm just like I did for the leg there. So go back in the same hole you just came out of and come back up just right about there. As close to the edge of the arm as you can get it. Now we're going to go through the arm, through inside, and come out this side. Again, coming as close as you can to the bottom edge of the arm. I'm coming out a little high there, so I'm just going to go back in right there. Then I'm going to go into the body and out through the back side. I'm going to make sure I'm coming through a stitch hole. There we go. So you see that holds the arm down nicely there. Now, if there's anything sitting up here that doesn't look right, fix it now. Like this could probably be tacked down. So I'll go in there. And I'll come up right close to where that part is that I want to tack down. And I'll just grab it with my yarn needle and go back. I'll go through it and down through the body and out through the back side. Paying attention to these little details makes a big difference in the overall look. So there we go, that looks a little bit better. I tack that corner down. So if there's anything else looking a little bit funny, we'll fix it now before we finish these off. So mine looks pretty good, so I'm just going to bring the yarn tail out where the other one is. Knot them two off. Cut them up a bit shorter and then push the knot into the body. Okay, now we're going to put the tail on. And the tail does get stuffed. Now if it's too hard to stuff it now, you can partially sew it to the body and then push the stuffing in there with a pencil after. I'm just going to put it on there. I'm going to put lots of pins in here. I'm pushing them in and down on a slant so when I sew around I can sew around, leave the pins in there and I won't hit the stem of the pin. So just going in on a slant. Okay, and that's lots of pins and that just holds it in place for me and it won't move around as I'm sewing around the tail. So I'm just going to bring my yarn needle in as close to the tail edge as I can get it and then come up somewhere else. That's comfortable for the needle to come through. Make sure you're coming through a stitch hole. You're going to go back in the same hole you just came out of. I'm going to go over here on this side. Come up as close as I can to the tail, close to the edge as I can. Okay, I'm going to go back in, catching the bottom stitches of that tail. And I'll come up on this side now. And don't pull it so tight, you see it's altering the shape of the tail there, so I'm just going to reach in there and pull it back out. So I just want it snug, I don't want to pull it all too tight. So I'm going to go back in, and then I'm going to come up on this side now. I forgot to show you, if you once you sew the tail partially on and you need to stuff it some more, then just look for a little gap or leave a little gap there. I, I forgot I was going to do this, so I don't have a very big gap. There's a little one here. I'll just put the stuffing there, and then I'll use the back end of a pencil or a stuffing stick, and just push it in there. And make sure that you get it evenly around. Just use your stick to shape the tail out. There we go. And then you can continue sewing around. Okay, once your tail is sewn all the way around, there's no gaps anywhere, then just bring the yarn tail up somewhere near the edge there. I'm just going to wrap around one of the stitches. 
go through that loop and pull it tight. And that just knotted off that yarn tail. Now you just bring this into the body and bury the yarn tail. Pull on it slightly and cut. Okay, now we're going to start sewing the ears on. Now you pin them in place before you start sewing either one of them in. And you want to make sure that you're happy with the placement and that they look great and all that good stuff. So you just pin down the corners like I've done here. Okay, I've already got the one sewn on and I just brought the yarn tail out through a stitch hole. I'm going to leave it hanging and wait for the other one. So when you before you pin them on, what I like to do is make sure that the finishing yarn tail is on a corner. So if it's sitting like this, just reposition your ear until it's sitting out in the corner. And then you just flatten it out and pull on it, shape it out a little bit with your fingers. It'll go on like that. Then we're just going to place it on and put your needle in on a slant so that when you're sewing around you don't catch the stem of the pin. And you can put more pins too if you need them. And again you want to make sure that it's sitting exactly where you want it and that it's even with the other one. So we're just going to go right in the corner of the ear down into the head and I'm going to come up right on this other corner here. And then I'm going to grab this edge here and go into the head and out somewhere on the back of the head. So go back in the same hole you just came out of and then come up just on the other side of that first stitch you just put in. And grab that edge of the ear and go back down and come up somewhere else away from that area. So this corner is now sewn in so you can take that pin out and this pin here. And I'm just going to go along and I'm going to sew all this edge down. And I'll show you what I do here to make it look nice and neat. I'm going to come up right beside the edge of the ear. And now when I go back in, I'm just going to grab that loop, the outer loop. You can see here I'm going to pick these off so you can see that more clearly. So when you look at the edge of the ear, there's two loops of the stitch there, two loops. I'm just going to grab the outer loops of those stitches. So grab the outer loop. You don't have to do it this way. I just find it makes it look a bit neater. I used to do both loops, but now I'm just doing the outside loop. Go back in and out through the back of the head. Go back in, come up right close, and if you can, just grab that outer loop on your way through. Back in, out to the back of the head. Now if anything's pulling in in the back of the head here, just reach in and pull it back up with your needle. Okay, so that entire edge is now sewn in, so I'm not going to go on the other side now and do the front of the ear. And it's just going to be the same way I did this one here. Go in, grab that one loop of the stitch, back down right close to the ear and out through the front of the head. Okay, and just keep repeating these steps all the way to the other edge of the ear. Okay, both the ears are sewn in and now I'm going to bring this yarn tail out where the other one is hanging. Knot them off. Cut them up a bit shorter and then push the knot into the back of the head.
Okay, now we're going to sew the muzzle on. So just thread your yarn needle. And you can see where it's coming out the bottom there. I'm just going to bring the yarn up. I don't like this little dip here. So I'm just going to bring the yarn up through there and pull it. That just kind of evened it out. So I'll just bring it to the back. There we go. So that just evened out that little dip. Okay, so the top of the muzzle gets placed on the 11th, just on top of the 11th row, counting down from the loop that we started off with. So remember we just count the rings? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So right on top of that 11th row, the top of the muzzle sits right on top of that. Okay, and I'm going to put lots of pins in, just like I did for the tail. I'm pushing them in on a slant so I can sew around them. Okay, now I know that's a lot of pins, but believe me, it's, it's just better because the muzzle does tend to move about when you're sewing. So I'm just going to bring my first stitch, I'm just going to bring the yarn needle into the head and bring it out somewhere where it's comfortable for the needle to come through. Going through a stitch hole. Okay, going back in that same hole we just came out of, I'm going to come up through the head, underneath, and through the edge of the bottom stitch there, the edge of the stitch on the muzzle. Now we're going to be gentle, we're not going to be pulling really tight because it'll alter the shape of the muzzle. So I'm just going to go over, I'm not going back into the head, I'm going over into the next stitch hole of the muzzle, right on the very edge of the muzzle, right down. I'm going to come up through somewhere else on the head there. Now pull it snug but not tight. See that didn't alter the shape at all there. Go back in and again up. These two can come out now. I'm going underneath the head, underneath the muzzle, and out through the bottom edge of the stitch. Going back down to the next stitch. Pulling snug but not tight. Didn't alter any shape there at all. Now these two can come out. Okay, only a couple more left. Coming up. That one's going to be too hard to come through that way, so I'm going to bring the yarn needle over here. Go back in the same hole I just came out of, and then up through the head. Through the stitch hole. And back over, a stitch over, and into the head. And again, pulling snug but not tight. And if you do end up pulling it too tight, just reach in there and pull it back out with your yarn needle. Okay, so that method works really, really nice for a bear that is just going to sit on a shelf. If it's going to be played with a lot, you might find the muzzle a little bit too loose. So all you really need is four stitches, one here, one here, and one on each side. And I just come up close to the muzzle, grab that stitch right there. Now I've already done this and I lost the clip so I have to redo it so my stitch is already in there and you can see that it's firmly down and it's not going anywhere. So I've already put my stitches in there so I'm just going to redo them here. But uh, before I put those four in the muzzle was nicely on there but it was loose so if I pulled up on it you could see the gaps. So if you don't want to see those gaps when your kids are playing or whatever I just add those four stitches like I show you here. So I'm just going to go, I'm right up beside the muzzle and I'm going back in through those bottom stitches, coming out on the side of the head. Go back in the same hole you just came out of and I want to do the top side now. Coming up as close as I can to the muzzle, to the edge of the muzzle. 
going back in, grabbing a stitch, the bottom edge of the stitch is there, and come up on the side. Now don't pull it so tight it alters any shape. Okay, back in the same hole we just came out of. I'm going to do the side now. Grab those bottom edge of the stitch into the head and out the other side. Go back in the same hole you just came out of in the last one. We're just going to do this side here. And back in and away. So that method looks pretty neat. Uh, you can see the stitches there now because I've doubled up on them because I lost that one clip. But this method here, just going on the inside of the muzzle first and then doing the stitch on the top and the sides, it looks really, really neat. I think that that is the nicest finish that you could probably get sewing a muzzle on. Uh, if you find that too difficult and you just stitch all the way around like you did for the tail, just make sure that you're coming up as close as you can to the muzzle and then back down and out through the head all the way around. And try not to pull so tight that you alter any shape around the muzzle because then it just doesn't look neat when you're looking at the bear. Okay, so we're all done. We're just going to get rid of these yarn tails now. Okay, all that's left now is the eyes. Now there's different options you can do for the eyes. For the bears, they all have store-bought safety eyes. But you can also do buttons, uh, felt, French knot, or paint the eyes in. All these bears have store-bought eyes. I'm just going to show you real quick what I've done here. Now this is a 10 millimeter, and I just glued him in and I just glued in a um, piece of white felt behind just to make the eyes pop. And this guy here, same thing, 10 millimeter eye with a little bit of felt behind it. And these two here have a 7.5 millimeter um, safety eye and I just glued them in. Now I didn't do anything else for the bears, but here's two examples here. I have a bunny, he's got French knot eyes, and a monkey who's got painted eyes. Now I'm going to insert a clip that's going to show you how to do these options as well so you, you're not stuck. And you can also do buttons and you can also do felt. So I'll insert that clip but I'm going to show you real quick here how I glued these guys in now. This one here hasn't been glued in. Now I use fabric tack and the thing about fabric tack is it works really really well. Uh, you won't be able to pull the eye off as hard as you try once it's, once it's all dried on there. And the other thing is you want to use as little as possible. If you put a whole bunch of glue on there and then shove it into the bear, it's going to ooze out the sides and it's going to end up on your bear's face and it's going to ruin all the work you just done. So I just put a little bit on the stem. Okay, so there's just a little glob on the stem there. So when you push it in, now it's going to push the glue up to the back of the eye. And it works really well, believe me. You can see it pushing the glue up to the back of the eye. You just push it in there as far as it'll go. I just did this one like 20 minutes ago and you can see it's already having a hard time coming out. But you want to leave it, make sure it dries completely before you start pulling on it. And that method works really well for me. I don't have really small children so nothing is a choking hazard for me. If your bear is going to a small child then please take into consideration what is a choking hazard for that child. And always better safe than sorry. So there's the bears done with their eyes. Now I'm going to insert that clip and I'll show you all the options that are available to you that you can do for your bear. Okay, now we're going to do the eyes and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a, a few different options here. I'm going to show you how to do the safety eye with the felt behind it. I'm going to show you how to do the French knot and then paint in a little bit of white there. And then I'm also going to show you on a separate piece to do the French knot and then add in the white with yarn. So I, I wanted to do it this way so you can see how to add the French knot actually to the elephant instead of just on a flat piece. So I'm going to do both uh, things during the tutorial. And I'm also going to throw in a clip from a previous doll tutorial that shows you how to do painted eyes. Now I didn't paint any of the eyes for the elephant but that choice is also available. So I'll throw that clip in there as well and also how to add in an eyebrow. So let's get started on all that good stuff. Okay, and one more idea is buttons. I'm not throwing that one in this tutorial, but you can hit that link and I have a tutorial here on YouTube that'll show you how to add buttons after your doll has been stuffed and closed. 
and how to thread a button and all that good stuff. So you can just hit that link and that's another option as well. So I just wanted to show you real quick. Here's the elephant with the felt behind the eyes and here's one without the felt. So I think both ways are very cute. And then the French knot. So lots of options available for eyes. These are French knot and these ones are safety eyes and all I did was a cut out some felt cut out two pieces of felt and then put a little slit in them and for the safety eye to go through. Now I glue mine in, I don't use the backs on my safety eyes so and I find that gluing them in works just great. So I just put the glue on the stem before you push it down just make sure that the felt is going in the direction you want it to and then push it in place. So that's one option. You don't have to put the felt behind them. I just find that it gives a little bit more life to the eye itself and just make sure that you don't put so much glue on that it it oozes out the front because once you have glue on yarn it's very difficult to get off and once this glue is dry it's really really strong this type of glue and if you need any more glue in the back, then just use something um, like a toothpick or something and just run the glue behind there. And that should hold it down just fine. So there's one option. Okay, so for the French knot eyes, what I did was make sure to mark off exactly where you want the eyes. Like try it out with stick pins first. So you just want to make sure that you're going through a post and that those are even on each side that you're going through a post. That's where your needle is going to come up through. You need to go through a post and pierce the fibers instead of going through a stitch hole. So that's we're going to be using a pointed end needle here. So I've already got the one in. So this one is marking off exactly where the other one was. So I'm, I just went through the side. And when you bring your needle through, make sure you're piercing the post just like so now you don't need that anymore bring it through bring one yarn tail through and leave the other one hanging okay and all you do is wrap the yarn around the end of that needle I wrap three times. There was once, twice, three times. And bring it over through the post again, not in the same hole you just came out of, but just over a little bit or just above a little bit. Go in and then bring it out, bring the needle out through where the other one is, the other yarn tail is hanging. And pull it through. There we go. And now I shape this one a little bit, so I just went back in. So I just want to grab this little bit here. Just running my needle through it and I'm going to bring my needle right where I want that yarn to go. And back out. So there we go, a little bit more of a shape that I wanted. And then I just bring the yarn tails out like I've done with all the other yarn tails and then cut them away. Okay, and then what I did then was just take a toothpick with a little bit of white acrylic paint and just dot it in there. And then once it's all dry, you can cut away those little fibers that are sticking up. Okay, so there's my French knot with painted in white. And I know many of you are going to want to try it with just yarn. So I'm going to redo the French knot here on a separate piece. 
threaded my black yarn. I'm going to bring it up through the back using a pointed needle again and piercing the fibers. Pull the yarn through and leave the one yarn tail hanging in the back. And now I'm going to wrap the yarn around my tip of my needle three times. Now bring that needle right beside where I came through and down through the back. And again, I like to go through that French knot and kind of shape it a bit with my yarn. So I just came through it. Grab some of that yarn and go right back down. There we go. It kind of just flattens out the French knot instead of it just sitting up. You have something uh, there to work with. And now, thread our white yarn. Just need a short length. And we're just going to come up through the French knot. And then right back down beside where we came through. So that looks pretty good too. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to paint the eyes on. And today I went down and was going to buy some fabric paint. Like there was four in a package and it was like $15 or something like that. And all I wanted was a little bit of black paint. So I didn't want to spend that kind of money just for the little bit of paint that I needed. So I this is what I use for my dolls. I use acrylic craft paint. Now. I don't know how that will wash up in the wash machine if you need to wash the toy quite often. So I'm going to show you how to do it with the paint and then you decide if you want to get the fabric paint or not. But this works just fine for me so that's what I'm going to use and I'll just show you and then you decide. Okay so all I did is I shook this up and I'm just going to use whatever paints in the lid there. And I'm using a pointed pencil. Uh, a needle works just fine too. Like I did one of mine the other night with the end of my yarn needle and then I just washed the needle off. Okay, so these are markers. So you just want to mark off where you want the eyes to go. Okay, so I'm just started on the one. I actually ditched my pencil and I'm just using the end of my yarn needle. You want to start off very, very small. Very, very light. And just start with a little bit like that and you just want to keep building it up. The slower you go the better and as little as you can use the better because you don't want to go in aggressively because with paint you could end up messing up your whole project. And this way if you start small and you decide oops I don't want to do that you can use felt or a French knot or whatever you need to cover it up. I'm just building little bits as we go here. And if you come across an area that you can't get paint on it because it's just kind of like um, a dip, then just use your needle and pull the fibers up. Just pull the fibers up. And just move that fiber around in there until you got the surface that you want. Okay, now I'm just adding in the white. And I'm using just a stick pin. Let's get a good blob on the end there. And if you feel like you put too much white on, don't worry about that because once it's dry, you can cover whatever you need to up with the black paint again, or even a black Sharpie works great too. Okay, and if you want to add something like a, an eyebrow or eyelashes or whatever, just take your thread and bring it through somewhere on the side of the head and come up where you want the start of whatever you're putting in. We're just going to put in an eyebrow here and just pull it through and leave the one yarn or the one thread tail hanging. Okay, and then you just wrap it, whatever you're making, just um, put it all in. 
so I think I wrapped this three times, so I will wrap it three times. So there we go. So once I'm happy with what I've, whatever I'm doing, then just go back in and out where the other thread tail is. And remember, nothing is permanent when you're working with thread and yarn. You can always pull it out and do it all over again. It doesn't matter. So if you're not happy with what you got, then start over. So now I will knot these off and then carry the, the knot inside the head and cut them free like I've done on all the previous other tails.